Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be building a window seat that has storage on both sides. Now, the reason I didn't make one continuous lid is because of the sheer size of this thing. It's massive, and obviously this is the reason that I didn't build it in this part of the shop, but rather in the second half of my basement shop where I was able to set up a temporary table. You'll see that in the upcoming clips. So basically, I didn't have to worry about painting it because I'm doing also some molding for this client as well. Um, so I'm going to uh, install this and then do all that trim and then they're going to have a painter come in and do all the paint. So we have supports in not only dividers, but at the same time for you to sit on this, it won't give or sag in the middle. If you were to leave this open here with uh, just a big you know, opening for storage and no divider for support, then you would have to put some kind of beam across because if someone sits on it and you know the top is, is comprised of plywood and solid wood edge banding, the plywood would sag in the middle from the weight of someone sitting there. With, with this, at this point now, with that divider across, it acts like a support, so that's not gonna happen. All right, so let's get started building this. You may be wondering why I am in this portion of my basement, which is separate from the other side of the basement, which is my shop. And sometimes I assemble things in the garage, which is the other half of my shop. Well, right now, the garage half of my shop, there's absolutely no room in there for me to assemble something this size. So I have too much going on. There are motorcycles in there. I have uh, kids' bikes in there and all that. So I have to move into this side of the basement temporarily to put this together. So. Uh, with that being said, what I'm going to do is I have my front, my back, and sides and dividers of the box of the window seat. We're going to sand everything down first before we assemble it. So once I do that and I assemble it, I don't have to worry about getting into those corners and trying to, uh, you know, really get everything smooth. This will make it a lot easier. So I'm also going to edge band the top of all the parts before I assemble them, so that this way when everything comes together, it appears to be solid planks of wood. So now, since the body of the window seat is done, I'm going to flip it on the back. 
and that's exposing the bottom for me. What I'm going to do is take scrap strips that I've ripped off of the previous pieces I've cut to make this, and I'm going to glue and tack them in to the bottom here on all three boxes, and those are going to be the cleats for me to install the bottom shelves on. So this is going to have the three box storage. Each one of them is going to have a bottom. It's not just going to be exposed to the floor in the house. Okay, so the trick here with these cleats isn't so much getting them exactly even on both sides. You can just eyeball it because they're going to be covered up by the bottom shelf. And if I can get this glue open. Okay. But it's just more for the fact that you keep it even and flush with the bottom. So just run a bit of glue. And I'm going to just eyeball it close enough there to the bottom. And then I'm going to make sure that I flush it up. Now, a lot of times when you put glue on the piece and you're trying to flush it up, it's going to want to tend to move. So what I do is get one side flush. Now, you could clamp it in place, but it's not necessary because once you tack the first piece in, then you can start to move down the line and keep it flush as you go. That's it, perfectly flush. Now I'll go ahead and take care of these all the way around in three boxes, and then we'll cut the bottoms and slide them in. Okay, so I have one piece mopped up in place here. It's not nailed in yet. But uh, what I want to stress is, since this is going to be unfinished on the inside, it'll be painted on the outside, the inside's gonna stay bare wood. You want to make sure you try to get the visual of a continuous piece of wood running through. So the way these are going to be facing, so when they open up this storage seat, they're going to see the grain pattern running from one bottom, even with the separation, into the next. And it's going to appear to be one solid piece of wood that ran through the whole window seat. So that's what you want to keep in mind, grain pattern. If you're going to paint it, and then you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. So when you do cut it, make sure you give yourself a little breathing room. Don't cut it so tight that it doesn't fit. You want to be able to put it in and pressure fit just slightly into place. Once you get that in place, then you can see how everything lines up. You make any adjustments you need and take it back out. And then what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of glue on the inside of these cleats. And obviously you can see now how these cleats work. That saved me a lot of time in having to, um, you know, make dados in the whole piece. Okay, so I feel it's gonna be a little easier to control when I put it in there to shift it around a little bit. Since there is that breathing room, I wanna make sure I have a nice even reveal around all the pieces. Now a little bit of glue on the cleats here. And that'll be the, the bulk of the strength. And then just tack it in with some 18 gauge brads to hold it in place while the glue sets. Because the glue, we all know, is the real strength. The brad nails, they, they provide some strength, but this is not gonna be weight bearing, so we don't need screws. So I'll just slide that piece in, hit the first cleat, and drop it. Okay, and that's it. Okay, so now that I've cut all the parts for the face frame and drilled out the pocket holes, what I've done was flip the face frame over to the back part so that I can attach it where the pocket screws will be hidden on the back side and attached to the case. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start by screwing the two ends together. And then I cut a spacer so that I can attach the middle sides evenly on both sides, giving me not only the three panels of the face frame, but also the offset, 
that I want with the two smaller panels being on the outside and the longer panel being on the inside. It's just visually more appealing. Okay, so the box is complete. Now we need to start working on the lid. A couple of things here before we get started on the lids. I'm um, going to do two separate lids because this is such a long window seat box that it's going to be very heavy to make one continuous lid. And with that being said, the lid itself, you know, can not only affect the, the weight of the lid, affect the hinges, but also slam down much harder if it's let go. Also, over time, um, it could sag in the middle. I have my spacers in place, which are just washers. That's going to give me the even reveal all around for the air gap. Now, I've just placed my hinges two inches from each end. Each one of the lids are going to get two hinges uh, because since they're broken down to two pieces, they're not that heavy anymore. And these are uh, oversized hinges. So now I'm just going to mark. I already have one mark there from the two inch from the edge of where I wanted to put it. So I'll mark the back of the case on this side here on the bottom and I'll mark the piece of the lid. And that's how I know where my hinge is gonna sit. And then after I mark out everything, I'm just gonna pull off the top and I'm going to chisel out the area here for the bottom part of the hinge. And then I'll mark out where, how far I need to go to chisel out the piece on the top. And then I could set everything in place and be done. Alright everybody, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a fun build. Um, it, it really is challenging when you don't have the, the shop size that you need to build big projects like this. Sometimes I build in the garage, but uh, in this case I have the Ultra Limited in there. That is just a tremendous motorcycle. It's bigger than the Road King was, so uh, you guys will see that in the future. But anyway, I wasn't able to put that anywhere else, so I have to leave that in there. So I was able to set up a temporary table and workbench inside the other portion of my basement which is not livable space anyway. I just have that set up as like a gym area, so. All right, so now I gotta go install this in between two walls underneath the window, and I hope you guys enjoyed the build. I hope you got something out of it. We have storage, two lids, both sides, separated by the solid beam. This is a frame and panel style, or um, if you didn't have the, the moldings in there, it would be known as a shaker style. But uh, putting that trim in there, it adds some life to it. Plus, it's going to match the rest of the house where I'm doing chair rail. That's going to stop right at the edge of the wall on either side. And then it's going to have the same molding for the wainscoting boxes below that chair rail. So it's going to match up real nice. And this is going to go straight on the window. It's going to stick out past the walls just a little bit to give it um, just a reveal. And also to give it not only more storage, but more surface area. The clients are going to put a cushion, they're going to get a cushion made for the top of this, lay it on top, and then of course, whenever they want to open it up and throw something in, all they have to do is lift this and the rest of the cushion will go with it. Alright guys, so if you liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me build this. I hope if you guys 
try to build something like this or you're going to build something like this, you get something out of it. A lot of information was packed into this. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video. Also check the link below in the description box. I'll have a link to all the tools that I use. All right guys, I'll see you next time.